is up? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are telling a story using the Allie Edwards Friends Kit, um, which honestly I didn't think Allie could do anything to top you, which I thought was going to be my favorite story kit of all time. And then Friends came out, um, and so I can't say that anymore. So today I'm telling a wedding story. This is going to be going in my Citrus Twist Life Crafted album, which you guys know my approach to storytelling. I use whatever album fits the story that I want to tell. Um, I've said this a few times, people ask me though. I do not scrapbook chronologically. I do not like organize my albums by any real theme or anything. It's literally what story fits in what album at the time. That's how I decide which one I'm using. So. I am telling a story in my Citrus Twist Life Crafted album. This is a little bit larger than a traveler's notebook. Um, the pages work out to be um, approximately 5 by 8.25 on either side. So I have a photo of my bridal party, my bride tribe, my I do crew. Um, I probably should have punched the holes in this while they were next to each other because they're not lining up, but who cares. Um, and then I did a few things to get ready because my plan is to do a full-size photo and then to do like an accordion flip out with some more photos and the story. So I did a few things. I, um, you guys know I'm a hybrid scrapbooker, so even though I get the full kit, I'm very much a hybrid kind of girl. So I took this card, which totally printed a little bit differently, um, like the background is a lot more muted in the printed version, but I kind of prefer that. And I repeated it on this piece of paper to get a little bit of patterned paper, and then I typed up my journaling on this card. So I did it. What is happening? Okay. I didn't actually use the physical card. I I just used the digital card and typed my journaling. Um, and then we are going to make a tag book. So one of the add-ons this month were these three by four kind of transparent tags and I love these. So this is going to be the size that I'm basing my tag flip on. So I'm actually gonna disappear real quick and cut the rest of my photos into this tag shape because I totally forgot to do that. And then we're gonna start assembling. All right, so here's the plan for my tag book. I have my hinges. You guys have seen me do tags and flip outs all the time. I do them the same way. My plan is to, since I don't want, I don't wanna lose the transparent nature of this, but I also, like I feel like I would lose a photo. You can put it over a photo and you could still see the photo, but I don't wanna lose the photo. So I'm going to um, just use a little bit of twine to attach it to a bit of white cardstock. Just, I don't wanna staple, I don't wanna use any tape, I don't wanna do any of those things that's gonna like ruin the transparent nature of it, um, but I do need to have a home, like I do need to find a way to anchor it to this. So I'm just gonna use my crop -a dial and punch a tiny hole. And then I'm gonna start building my tag book. So my plan, let's see, I gotta figure out how I want to actually arrange these so let's see I have photo photo I have journaling I want to put this journaling card there are there are friends and there's family and there are friends that become family and then I actually have my story which I got to put somewhere all right so that works so I'm just gonna alternate it so I'm going to use my hinges so the way these work I mean you guys have probably seen me do this a hundred times by now but I take a piece of scrap card stock I score it with my Martha Stewart scoreboard. Um, these pieces of scrap card stock are one inch, two inches wide, and I score them with the scoreboard at one inch, and then make hinges. And this is how I do all my flip outs, this is how I do all my tag books. I don't have to worry about washi and the integrity of washi tape. That's the reason I do my flips this way, for two reasons. One, I don't trust washi tape long term. Um, I trust cardstock and adhesive more than I trust washi tape long term. And two, I don't want to have to worry about matching my washi tape to, to whatever else I'm using. So I made four hinges. I had no idea how many I was going to need, but I made four. And it seems like four was exactly what I needed. So I got really lucky. So I have a few photos. I have a picture of my sister with my maid of honor. That's my sister, that's my maid of honor. It's a picture of my sister and I. Um, and then I have a picture of my bridal party and my mom, my mom's in that picture, while we were getting ready for the wedding. Um, and it's just funny, while I was working on this, I realized that so many people are using the friend story kit to tell wedding stories. Um, like I see my friend Crystal has already done hers. 
and she told a wedding story with hers. So maybe if you, you know, if you're looking for a reason to scrapbook old wedding photos or old graduation photos or anything like that, I think the friend story kit is a great lens for it. Okay, so let's see. All right, I need one more. This has to go like this. All right, hold on. Let's figure this out. Every time I do a tag book like this, I always ruin it. So let's see. This, I wanted this to go on the back of this, but when it pulls out, which way is it gonna pull out? All right, let's just experiment with this to figure this out, you guys. We're gonna do this together. Okay, so if this is like this, no, it has to pull out like this. Okay, so that works. I just need to put a hinge on this. Never mind. Okay, I figured it out. I need one more hinge. Um, yeah, and so this is what I do when I'm making these tag books. I, they are 100% a work in progress. I almost never know how they're going to work until I start assembling them. I'm not one of those like planner people who have all the ideas ready. I'm literally flying by the seat of my pants. I have like kind of a sketch and then I start working and then the sketch either works or it doesn't. But it's working right now. Okay, so if I put this here, that works. All right, so we just need one more hinge and I think we're ready to assemble. So the way I'm going to pop this into my album is I'm going to use, I have a bit of um, acetate. This is the graphics acetate. This is what I use all December daily long. It is my favorite. All right, let's see how this works. Okay, you guys, so I'm back. So I had to like disappear and think about this because I needed my flip out to sit like this. So here's how I needed it to sit. I needed this to be the top. Oh, it just like fell apart. Hold on, it totally just fell apart. I didn't stick this down well enough. Okay, but I needed, I needed this to be on top, right? And then I needed it to pull out this way. So I ended up having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I always forget that I need an odd number of tags when I do this. And I always prep for an even number. And this, like I did this in December daily also when I was doing this similar project. I always forget that you need an odd number of tags. Um, so let that be a lesson to you. If you decide to do something like this, just prep for an odd number of tags. An even number almost never works uh, to get the look that we're going for. But I got my odd number of tags, so we are going to keep working on assembling this. And these, when you get any of these transparent things from Ali Edwards, they always have a little bit of plastic on them, um, which takes a little bit of work and elbow grease to get off of, to get off. Um, but yeah, it's totally worth doing it. Okay, so like I said, I'm just going to attach this with a little bit of twine. I don't want to use a staple or anything else, and I definitely don't want to put adhesive through it. So I'm just going to use a little bit of twine. I had some like navy twine. I have no idea where it's from, but I had some navy twine in my stash. It's like baker's twine, so it's like navy and white, um, but it works perfectly with the colors in this kit. And this, like, so this is going to be the home for my story and the home for more photos. Now I could have put this in like a six by 12 album, but then I wouldn't have been able to do the large photo thing that I wanted. And I really wanted the mix of large and small photos, which is why it is going in this album. All right, so I have my twine and I have my flip. And I like that this is kinda, you know, like it's free, it's free moving. Um, so we'll see how long this holds. I might have to use a thicker ribbon, but for now it seems to be working okay. And then the way we're gonna attach it into the book is, First, I'm going to put some holes in this bit of acetate before I stick things in. So I'm going to put some holes here. And just make sure that those are okay. Okay, good. So this piece of acetate is cut, um, I think I cut it four by five. So it's just a little bit bigger on all sides than my tag book. I'm going to literally just stick this right on to this piece of acetate. And then on the back side, I have this tag. This is, this is a three by four card. And I'm actually making an effort to use my cards, you guys. So I'm using the actual card, not using one that I printed out. Because typically when I do stuff like this, I like freak out about using my stuff so I don't use them. Um, so I'm using the actual card, not a digital that I printed out, the actual card and that I cut down. 
All right, so here's pretty much how the tag looks. So this is gonna be free moving at the front. Oh, I might stamp something. Actually, wouldn't that be fun to do some stamping? Okay, maybe I'll do that. But we'll think about that later. So here we go, here's my tag. It opens up like this with the photos, some journaling cards and the story. And then on the back, it's just another card. And we'll embellish, obviously we'll embellish all of this stuff after we're done building the skeleton of the project. But this is typically how I work. I do the skeleton of the project first and then I go ahead and embellish the rest of it. So for the rest of the layout, I printed my photo a funky size um, because I didn't want to cut, like it was really hard to figure out a place to cut into the photo where I'd be able to cut it in half, but I'm not cutting any of my, like my face or my friend's faces. So what I decided to do Hold on guys, I can't like talk and work. <laughs> All right, good. So what I decided to do was print it. Um, I think this is eight by eight and a half. Um, and then I have this piece on this side that is going to be a home for my title. So here we go, that's what that's gonna look like. So I get to use the pattern paper in the kit and then this is a digital stamp. Um, Allie, if you get the kits, you have the option to purchase the digital version. And I, this is my favorite thing to do with the digital stamps, besides using them to make journaling cards. One of my favorite things to do with the digital stamps is to use them to make cut files. So as any digital stamp you have, if you have the Silhouette Studio software, you can take any digital stamp into Silhouette Studio, trace it, and make a cut file out of it. And I do this almost, like I do this super often with my supplies from Ali Edwards, and I know a lot of people do it as well. It's just a way to just make your, pro your products go a little bit further. So I cut this on black cardstock just so it would stand out on my title. I mean, on my background paper. I didn't want to cut it on a color and then you like, it doesn't show up as well. So here we go. I think that looks super good. I really like the way that looks. So now we've done the hard stuff. We've built the skeleton of the project and this is typically how I scrapbook. I build the skeleton of my project. Once everything is together and I like the way it looks, Oh, I don't know how I feel about that, because that is covering our faces. All right, I didn't think this through. Huh. I'm wondering if it would make more sense down here where it's not covering. Okay, I might have to like flip this. We'll see if I can just take this off and flip it. Because I, I don't like it that it's covering all of our faces. So I'm just going to flip it. So the holes, because I already punched, I already punched this acetate and I'm not going to use some more plastic to do the same thing. So I'm just going to put it the opposite way. The flip still works the same. It's just now on the bottom of my spread and not at the top. That's the only difference. So the project's pretty much, the skeleton of the project's still the same. I think when I like, was sketching this, I thought that our faces were closer to the bottom of the photo and they're really just right along the midline. So all I did was flip this so now it's gonna sit at the bottom of the page and not at the top. And now it's not interrupting anybody's faces, which I think looks better. I think that looks a lot better. Okay, so now we're gonna work on embellishing. So I have everything from the kit because it's a brand new kit. Um, so I'm gonna pull out some stickers. I have some puffy hearts. I have all the add-ons because I'm just ridiculous these days. I have all the add-ons. Um, and then there are these clear, clear phrases. But I think I'm going to start with some chipboard because chipboard is typically where I start when it comes to embellishing my pages. I really like this long pink banner that says friendship over and over in Allie's handwriting, but it just doesn't fit here. So let's see. Oh, I love this friendship or forever friends. I kind of want to put this forever friends one because the I think the color. Oh, it looks super good. All right, so I'm going to put this piece. Where are my tweezers? I'm going to put this piece that says forever friends. Just going to grab my T-square. So it goes down straight the first time and I don't have to pick it up and move it. Perfect. Oh, I like that so much. Okay. The good thing about like when you do large photos like this, I don't think they require a crazy amount of embellishing. I actually think that if you start putting a ton of embellishing, you lose you lose the photo. Um, so I'm gonna do like a quick cluster with some stickers. So I have this pink sticker that says love you. And I have this chipboard banner that says best days with my best friends, which I love. 
So I'm just going to create a quick cluster up top. I'm going to put this one first and then put this pink one far enough over so that you can still see it when I put down that blue chipboard piece that says best days with my best friends. And I'm pretty sure after that, that is all the embellishing I'm going to do. Maybe we'll see. Oh, I love that. So that worked out perfectly. Okay. And the good thing about that is I have the chipboard here and I have the chipboard here. And you guys know how I am about introducing one texture and not repeating it in a million other places. Um, and I think I'm going to put I love this friendship right here. So one more bit of chipboard. I think I'm going to just wing this and see if I can put this down straight without the T-square. And that works out okay. All right. So I think the only other thing I'm going to do is maybe do some stuff. I'm interrupting myself because there's so many things in this kit and I want to use it all. Um, but on the bright side, there's future stories and I don't have to put them all on one page, but I really want to. Like I love these fabric hearts. Okay, I'm putting that fabric heart down. It's just, uh, it's irresistible and I must use it. So I'm gonna quickly put down these fabric hearts. These were in the main kit. These weren't an add-on. So if you got the main kit, you have these. Um, I saw someone do something where she got some printable fabric from Staples or from Amazon and printed her own fabric embellishments, which is 100% now has to be a thing that I do because I love texture. So anytime there's like these pleather embellishments or any of that stuff, I'm all about that. So I'm probably gonna end up trying to figure out how to print some fabric embellishments at some time, some point. All right, so I keep getting distracted because I said I was gonna try to do some stamping. Now here is the downside to the order that I did this in. The rest of my flip book is already, is already assembled. So if I do the stamping, and I hate it, I'm gonna have to take it apart. Oh, I don't have to take it apart because it's just this card. So I could take it apart, all right. So I'm pulling out my Stamper Secret Weapon uh, and I'm gonna pull out the stamp set. And I saw that there are, yeah, there are some really cool florals. So I think, since I'm feeling brave, I might try to recreate some of these florals. Okay, so I've pulled out some inks. I have some inks from scrapbook.com and an ink from Allie Edwards. And I am just going to do my best to create, um, something that looks like this floral cluster. Um, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm gonna do my best, we'll see. So I, I have, uh, this color's called Coastal Storm. And there are one, two, three, four. There's four kind of floral stems. I mean, four kind of floral embellishments in the kit. So I stamped down four stems. Um, in the Coastal Storm color. And then I don't have enough colors for flowers, so I'm gonna have to go back and pick up some more, pick out one more color. Um, so there is this, I think there's like an orange in the kit, so I have this color called Orange Spice. And I'm not even like pre-stamping this, like I'm just going right from the ink pad to my project, so we'll see how this goes. Okay, that's actually really pretty. All right, so there's this color called Orange Spice, and I will, just kind of pop my stamp somewhere and clean them after we're done. Um, there's this flower and I grabbed Rose Garden cause it does seem like there's like a coral, like a pinky coral in this. So let's just pop that on. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. Um, and then there are like the leaves were yellow so I'm going to hopefully stamp this over this blue stem and not have it look terrible. You guys, we are totally making this up as we go right now. I am winging this. Oh, that actually looks pretty good. Hey, that worked out. Okay. All right, I need one more color. I totally miscounted. Um, so I need, I'm gonna go get one more color and I will be right back. Okay, so I picked up this color. This is called Peach from the Stamp Market. 
um, and just used it to, oh, there was ink on my acrylic block. So of course, with the last color I stamp, I make mistakes, but I don't know if it's that obvious because this peach color is pretty light anyway. So I stamped my four flower stems, and then I think I'm going to stamp this sentiment that says uh, Forever Friends. I kind of like that one, and it fits perfectly. So I'm going to stamp Forever Friends. Um, I don't think I want to stamp it in black. Let's see how this looks on top. Oh, that looks super cute. Oh, I like that so much. Okay, I don't know if I want to, I am going to stamp it in black. All right, I'm just going to grab my black scrapbook.com ink. I will link all these inks in, in the description box. If you haven't tried the scrapbook.com inks, they are great. They are hybrid ink. Um, so they're a pigment and a dye ink, um, and you get really good impressions. They dry really fast, which is my issue with inks. I don't like inks that have like a super long dry time because I'm just impatient. Okay, so I stamped Forever Friends. And let's put my, let's find my twine and put my tag back on. Okay, friends, so we're done. I did my stamping. I have now popped it into the album so you can see what it looks like in the album. So I have my big photo, which if I decide to take this out, I could have the big photo. And then I have my pullout with all the smaller photos and my journaling. And then on the back side, I just have this tag. And this is going to stay shut in the album. I'm probably gonna put like a paper clip or something just so it doesn't like flop around so much. And yeah, it does add a little bit of bulk to it, but you guys know that I'm no, no stranger to bulk. Things like that don't bother me. So that's my project for today, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you grab the Friends Kit if you aren't already subscribed. It is a great killer kit. The color palette is wonderful, and it's great for telling the stories of the people who are important in your lives. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you liked the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you're so inclined. Let me know what you're up to during this week, and I will see you at the next one. So until next time, keep your crafty and have the best day and I will see you around. Bye!